praying man is in the snake fighting. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at the epic battles that go on between bugs and snakes. Now this topic, if a little gross, I promise you, turns out to be absolutely fascinating. So, let's dive in. Man is in the snake fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. That's an incredible video. It looks kind of simple at first, but when I look at it more closely, I, I really start to think that the mantis is being tactical. He's got the snake by the rostrum and the lower jaw, one in each arm with his, his raptorial arms, as you call them. He's not trying to bite the snake, he's not trying to do damage to it, he's literally trying to wear it down. I, I Honestly, at this point, I don't know how smart a mantis is, but I, I'm starting to think they must have some logical reasoning going on. The worst I think would be uh, praying mantises. They yeah. scare the shit out of me. Mm -hmm, They're right. so strong for yeah. their size. Yeah. What is this one snake? Snakes. It's lots of them. It's like a highlight video. Oh my and gosh! Look, look at, at that. that. It's got a f***ing snake. Yeah. I, I think we can't even imagine how strong they would be if they were our size. No. I think they would run right through walls. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Would they run through walls? I'm not sure about that. They would be freakishly strong though. Well, the mantids definitely won that round. That was a European mantis, which is probably my second favorite species. You can always tell a European mantis because they've got like a black circle with a white dot in the middle on the underside of each of their arms. And they're kind of like a mid-sized chunky species of mantis. They're really cool to keep as pets. They've got a lot of character. Uh, and that one was eating a grass snake. So yeah, they're, they're pretty strong for their size too. It looks like we have a desert blonde tarantula here from the genus Siphonopelma, and it's caught itself a long-nosed snake out in desert habitat here. Long-nosed snakes are a small species. I mean, they can get to like two foot long, maybe. But the desert blonde tarantula is a weird one. To see it scampering around and, and killing a snake like that, that's that's pretty intense. I've, I've never seen one being that, um, I don't know, intimidating for its size anyway. I'm just casually walking through the forest when I came across a rough green snake choking down a wolf spider. This species of snake is known to eat invertebrates, but I've never even heard of one eating a spider. Yeah, I had this preconceived notion with rough green snakes. I don't know if it's entirely true or not, but my thinking on them was always that they preferred like grubs, more soft-bodied prey. That might be bias from keeping them in captivity though, so I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised it would go for a spider, but I guess, you know, it goes for what it can. They're, they're uh, an opportunistic hunter and they like bugs. In what can only be described as the most Australian thing ever, a giant spider has been caught on camera devouring a snake stuck in its web in Queensland. Mitch Blake, who runs the tourist park in Miller Miller, told Yahoo News Australia I was expecting it to be a gecko, not a snake. Adding it looks like a golden orb weaving spider had caught a baby green tree snake that night and already had a bit of a snack near its tail. Incredible how strong the web of some of these species is. Uh, I think it was a similar species that once caught a bird in its web. I'm not sure about that though. Australia is home to many of the most venomous creatures on the planet, including the red back spider, also known as the Australian black widow. I didn't actually know it was known as the Australian black widow. I've never heard it called that. I've always just heard it called a red back spider. But anyway, redback spiders and black widows are in the same family, and you even have some of their relatives like brown widows and, and false widows here in the UK, and they all have exceptionally strong web. In fact, there's even footage or a record, I can't remember, of a false widow in Ireland, I believe it was, actually catching a bat in its web. 
which is pretty incredible because they're, they're about that big, the spider is. A snake riddled with ticks was lucky to be alive after it was found in a horrifying condition. Snake catcher Troy Hovenden told Yahoo News Australia, I've seen plenty of snakes with one or two ticks on them, but he hadn't heard of a situation this bad in almost a decade. With no emergency vets or wildlife rescue nearby, Troy, who caught the snake from a neighbor's property, said he was forced to act. Speaking to Yahoo News Australia, Troy said, After speaking to fauna and wires, we removed the majority of ticks around its head and then released it. Hopefully the next time it sheds, all the ticks should come off. Just a small error in that clip. Someone will point it out in the comments, hopefully. It's pretty easy. Um, but yeah, ticks and other parasites, particularly ectoparasites like that, they tend to be an indicator of an animal's overall health. This could be a snake that's been through some rough times. It could have other things wrong with it. So a healthy carpet python or diamond python or whatever out in the wild probably isn't going to be overwhelmed by ticks. But this can be a sign that something else is going wrong. And I've seen a few of these shows before where um, one snake was found in a, a bit of a weakened state like that in particular and they took it to a vet and the vets did x-rays and anesthesia and all this kind of stuff to try and figure out what was wrong with it. And the stress and the additional, you know, hardship of going through those tests actually, I believe, made the snake pass away, in my personal opinion. So yeah, take the ticks off and release it again, I think is the best way. If that snake can pull through, great. If it can't, that's, that's kind of nature in most cases. A thread snake. As thin as a strand of spaghetti. And half as long. He's an ant hunter, of sorts. Adult ants are too large to get his tiny jaws around, but their larvae go down nicely. If you're wondering why some blind snakes are called thread snakes, it's because blind snakes, most of them are in the Typhlopidae family, whereas thread snakes are in the Leptotyphlopidae. Anyway, Whatever the case, they like eating ant grubs and they're pretty good at it to the point where some of them actually release pheromones, I believe, so that the ants don't attack them, which is pretty incredible. They definitely win this round. The python got swarmed by an army of ants. A massive column of army ants was blocking the python's path home, but the snake didn't want to go around it, decided to go straight through. What it didn't know was how big of a mistake that would be. The army ants were in migration, transporting food and searching for a new hunting ground. Anything in their way, even larger animals, could be stripped down to pieces in seconds. As the python moved through the shallow river, it didn't notice the ants had already spotted it. The ants quickly sounded the alarm and summoned reinforcements. In seconds, thousands of ants swarmed the snake's body, biting through its scales. In Pretty incredible that ants can take on an animal that size and that strength, even though to me, that python, it was one of the species of rock python I didn't really see on that footage, um, it did look like it was in pretty poor condition. It looked a bit baggy down the sides, so I'm not really sure what kind of condition that snake was in, whether it was put there for the footage, who knows. Basically, I can't find the rest of that documentary, so I don't know what happened to the snake. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. We're on the long road to 100,000 subscribers, and I know that's an ambitious target, but only you can make it happen. That's a small species of snake from Central America that really likes eating centipedes. So to us, a centipede might look like kind of a gross meal, but to a snake, they're an excellent meal because they're quite a decent size. They're easy to swallow because they're the same width as a snake, pretty much. And they're, they're full of muscle, so they're just packed with protein. So for a small snake species, a centipede, if it can take it on, is an excellent prey source. That was fun to see.
Got a bit gross at the end there, but yeah, there's a lot of snakes. Well, a lot. There's a good handful or so of species that specialize in eating snails, and they've got this way of kind of wiggling the snail out of the shell. Again, a snail might look gross to some of us, but it's just pretty much pure muscle along the foot. Um, well, I call it the foot, the, you know, the, the, the bit the snail goes along on, because I've completely forgotten the scientific word for that. But anyway, they're, they're packed with muscle as well. So again, it's a great prey source, even if it doesn't look that evident to the rest of us. That was a blunt-headed snail-eating snake, really taking its time to identify its prey there and, I don't know, think about what end it was going to bite first. As quite a cool species, I have no experience with them in captivity whatsoever, so if anyone's dealt with one as a pet, I'd, I'd really like to hear about it. Oh, I'll never see that again in my life, eh? No. Oh, thank It would be nice to know if that crab had actually caught and killed the snake or if it scavenged it from the water's edge. I mean, crabs are incredibly mean. And for the purpose of this video, I am counting crustaceans as bugs as well, just to make my life easier. This snake is pretty cool. This is the crab-eating snake, and they are rear-fanged, but it doesn't pose any threat to humans. But what's cool about this snake is, as the name implies, it eats crabs, but how it does it is the cool part. This snake will bite onto a crab and venomate it and immobilize it. Then it'll do something that no other snake does. It will literally rip apart the crab and eat its limbs one at a time. This snake literally twists and turns and ties itself in knots until a chunk of the crab is ripped off and then it swallows the chunks. It's the, I mean, that's so cool. It's the only snake that does this. Really cool, really specialized. Again, it's got a prey source that's packed with protein and it's developed this feeding method that goes alongside that. In an area where there's lots of different species competing for food sources, this snake has got a food source which is pretty unique and probably helps its survival no end. I'm sure there's not a dozen other species of snakes all trying to get the crabs. Crayfish, as they grow, shed their armour. A newly molted crayfish looks much the same, but it gives off different chemicals that the snake can detect in the water with its tongue and from some distance away. It can swallow this crayfish because, since it's newly moated, it's as soft as a boiled egg. So that was a queen snake eating a freshly moulted crayfish. And in case you're wondering, many snake species that have aquatic habits and, and like to hunt in the water, they can smell underwater just like on land by using their tongue and their vomeronasal system. It's not, we don't think it's as effective as smelling in air but it's definitely effective enough for the queen snake. What does annoy me about the queen snake though is that I grew up well within their range and I never found one. The reason for this is that in my area, I was a kid so I wasn't driving yet, and in my area there was a lot of like slow moving rivers, oxbow lakes, ponds, habitat like that, all sluggish water, a bit murky and a bit mucky. And apparently queen snakes, they only like flowing clean water. And this is something that's probably going to be a challenge in their survival in the long run, as more of these wild habitats are corrupted by, um, you know, human encroachment, basically. I looked like a type of tapeworm being removed from under the skin of the snake. 
Snakes get a lot of different parasites. Snakes that eat fish, or amphibians in particular, get a lot of parasites, even intramuscular parasites, parasites in their lungs and under the skin like that. That guy wasn't using rubber gloves, and at first you might think, mm, maybe he should be. I would be tempted to myself, but the other side of the coin is that the guy obviously knows what he's doing, and if you wear rubber gloves for something like that, you lose a little bit of dexterity. So, for the snake's safety, maybe it's best to just do it with bare hands. Even though that's completely disgusting, I mean, that is 100% gross. Just a really, really gross one to finish off with there. <laughs> That's a species of snake which lives in Ecuador. It's like a coral snake mimic. It's basically a little ground snake. Some people call it the coral ground snake or the black ground snake. And it's kind of, it's an earthworm eater. And I always thought of snakes like that as eating worms their own size or smaller than them so that they can actually have a chance at swallowing it. And I haven't seen much about this snake in the wild, so I didn't know that they would go and attack a huge earthworm like that and just kind of wrestle it and tear into it. I'd, I'd never seen that before. I literally assumed they just picked on worms that they could swallow. So if anyone knows about this species and you know otherwise, and that's like a particular hunting method they have, please let me know because I'd be interested to hear. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. The reason I did this one is because at first, like I said, it sounds like just kind of a gross topic, you know, bugs fighting snakes and it's a little bit sensationalist. But actually I find it fascinating the fact that we tend to think of vertebrates, reptiles, mammals, etc, even fish as kind of higher animals and we think of invertebrates as lower animals. But snakes are fascinating because they, they have this range of size throughout their lives and throughout their different species. Um, they can be huge, they can be a massive chunk like an anaconda, or they can be tiny like a blind snake. And when they are small, or in the tropics where some bugs are huge, they do enter into battle. And there's this back and forth. The vertebrate isn't always the higher animal. The outcome isn't always favorable to the animal that we consider more developed. And that kind of paradox is something that I find interesting and it's part of what makes biology interesting, in my opinion. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Please do come back next week for another one and I'll try and make something else interesting. Thank you very much.